Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I want to talk about the Harbor Freight workbench and how this $80 workbench ended up costing me about $3,000 in total. Not much of that is my own fault because I obviously like the nicer things and I want things specced out a certain way, but um, I want to talk a little bit about the workbench as it sits. I want to talk a little bit about the quality and the, uh, the build quality of this workbench if you are interested in buying one, and then we're going to talk about how I customized it to make it my own. First and foremost, the build quality. If you watch the Garage Build Series Episode 1, you may see that this thing is a complete pain in the ass to put together. It's an Ikea style flat pat box, nothing is together, and mine didn't come with all the screws. Um, which is fine, it is what it is. I went out and got some screws from uh, Ace Hardware finish the build and stuff like that. Now, I have to say, the one that they had on display was a shaky um, POS. You know, it wasn't very good, it was shaky, the bolts weren't put together correctly, but some of the other reviews I've seen have said that I've obviously is because some Harbor Freight employee just throws it together good enough that it'll stand up by itself and, uh, and that's about it. Now, I have to say, this one, you know, is very sturdy. Um, you know, anything that you're going to be doing on, well, not anything, but anything that I'm going to be doing on this is, uh, should, shouldn't be an issue. It's not very thick steel. It's maybe a 22 gauge steel. The wood is, uh, pressed obviously with a, just a plain black cover and the light is a fluorescent bulb. It's an $80 workbench, but for what I wanted to do and what I wanted to achieve for this workbench, I really couldn't find anything else comparable in size. Um, you know, even some of the more expensive workbenches, they didn't have a big pegboard or they had cabinets up above and it just didn't give me a very good customizable platform for what I wanted to do. So I ended up going with this Harbor Freight workbench, which I tend to stay away from Harbor Freight stuff as much as I can because, you know, it, it's, it's not that it's bad. It's not that it's, um, anything like that. It just, you know, for, for what I'm trying to achieve, I generally go with something that'll last a little longer. But like I said, in this circumstance, the Harbor Freight workbench suited me just fine. So anyway, once I got the workbench put together, I decided to go through most of the seams and, and pretty much behind the entire pegboard and put um, a layer of epoxy on most of the critical joint. As you can see, I have my Adams Polishes Mini Swirl Killer, my Adams Polishes 15 millimeter Swirl Killer, and also six 16 out bottles of Adams Polishes product along with the bottle holder. Now these are actually really thick, really high quality um, hangers and, and mounts, so I was a little bit worried about the weight of them, but as you can see, no issues at all. I have them mounted with just a couple of screws that I got from Ace Hardware at the same time as I got the screws for the drawer and they haven't moved. Now this bottle holder is part of the set as you'll see in the background of many videos. These bottles generally stay the same. Sometimes I trade them out but for the most part they stay the same. The reason behind that is I've fashioned this workbench as part of the set or part of the background of my garage videos going forward. Again, watch episode one if you want some more information on that. But for that reason, this is kind of a, a, a decorational piece. Obviously, I have many, many more bottles of Adams Polishes product that I actually use, but rather than, you know, taking in and out of this and having half bottles. Um, I'm kind of OCD about this stuff, so now all these bottles match and I don't have to worry about it. Above that, I added my CJC off-road front license plate that used to be on my truck just as a decorative piece. I added my Milwaukee M12 charger here. Again, drilled a hole through the pegboard for the cable so it sits completely flush. I added a couple other personal items. Where I believe a lot of the curiosity comes from is this 20 inch screen I have. Now this is an HDMI screen. It, um, I got it from Amazon. I believe it's called a Scepter or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, but it has built in speakers and it is an HDMI screen. It's mounted on with a VESA mount on the back. And again, there's a custom hole drilled through for the power cable and for the HDMI. So it gives the appearance that it's completely floating. As you can see, it does turn on, but at this current moment, it is not plugged into anything. The reason I put a screen is because 
A lot of the time when I'm working here on the tabletop where I'm doing things or I'm filming, um, I have my laptop or my iPad positioned here and that takes up a lot of desk space. Now, I wanna be able to watch videos, I wanna be able to read tutorials, and I also wanna be able to have information referenced here when the camera is facing the other way so that I don't misrepresent anything I'm doing. I also, when I'm working here on private projects, I wanna have some kind of entertainment that I can watch and look up refer reference things, order parts, things of that nature right here without bringing my laptop into this in into this work environment and potentially damaging it. Now this left hand drawer on the workbench, I essentially made the technology drawer. So what I've done is added a wireless keyboard that will eventually pair with the computer, the wireless mouse. I have wireless controllers in here for the aperture light behind me when I'm filming from this direction and also uh, the controller for the RGB strip above the uh, workbench there where I can you know, change the color, do different things like that and uh, I think the purple looks kind of cool. I also included a memory card reader in here and the HDMI cable for when eventually I'm gonna be purchasing a Mac mini to place into this drawer and that will drive this computer and also the eight terabytes hard drive I have in here which will also double as a home server so I can use my laptop and this computer in conjunction for editing and stuff like that. One of the other great things about this workbench is it does have a lower shelf level. As you can see here in the corner, I've uh, permanently affixed two plastic drawers to hold things. I currently have some towels and some cutting discs in there. I also have two Adams Polishes buckets stored underneath, along with some other doodads that need to be stored. As well as that, there's also enough foot clearance underneath to store stuff on the ground underneath the shelf which is where I currently house uh, the three pairs of coil springs that I put onto my truck that didn't end up working out for what I want to do. While I decide if I'm going to keep those, throw them away, or just forget about them forever, they can sit there stored out of the way with no, not much issue. The other nice thing about this being a metal framework bench is obviously it's magnetic. So as you can see here on the side, I have the cord for this Adams Polishes Mini Swirl Killer ran down the side across the Milwaukee M12 charger and magnet held on the side here. So it's out of sight, out of mind, but still not sitting on the ground. Overall, this is a very, very nice workbench for $80. Um, as I said, I, for me, I think the legs could be a bit qu better quality. Legs are just an L-shaped beam. However, you know, even with rocking it and things like that, you know, I'm not gonna go crazy, but it is rather sturdy and doing tabletop videos unboxings and and things of that nature i think this will be a very very good workbench for probably 85 percent of consumers out there i've read reviews of guys adding vice grips to this um, and different things of that nature um i don't know if i would put that much torque on here i don't have much use for a vice grip but at $80, it's not much of a risk to you. The only negatives I found with this workbench were of course the uh, self-installation process, the missing screws, and that's about it to be honest. I think it's a, a very good use of money and for $80, you really don't have much to lose. Like I said, I've, I've customized mine in a tremendous way. I think it's very cool. I don't see this kind of thing in any other YouTuber uh, background in their garage. I don't see this kind of thing in any of my buddy's house. So. I think this is very cool, very unique way to uh, to kind of have a set in the garage and uh, and not just you know be filming up against the wall. So for everything I need, it's it's really a great product, and I I would recommend you getting one. Guys, we're going to be doing a lot more of these type of videos, garage videos, comparison videos. We're going to be looking at tools. We're going to be looking at detailing products. We're going to be looking at. Um, tool comparisons, the, the, the HOMAC toolbox behind me here is going to start getting a lot of videos. I'm waiting to get my top box back from the manufacturer and then we're going to start talking about that stuff and how I have it set up. Also the Harbor Freight tool cart. I said I'd stay away from Harbor Freight but I will be talking about the Harbor Freight tool cart and how I use that and what I use it for in the future also. So. If you enjoy those kind of videos or you kind of are a DIY guy, a professional tech, anything like that, please do consider subscribing as it helps the channel. Leave a like on this video if you would to help somebody else find out some information that you may have found helpful from this video. That's all I got for now and we'll see you next video.